what the, the, the review team found is that the mission took an unduly conservative approach in its reporting to the media and to its headquarters when, uh, when, it, came to, when it comes to incidents involving government or pro-government forces. So I don't think that's in contradiction to what you've just, uh, what you've just said. Ma Matthew. In order, I guess I, first of all, I mean, overall, I wanted to know, like, who then, who does the UN find was responsible for this non-reporting to headquarters and to the media? And two, the statement that you've read, it's obviously ba it's based on some kind of a report. Is the do in order to judge, to take a look at what they found, is that document going to be made public? The the uh, the Secretary General will be sending or has sent uh, as we speak to the Security Council uh, a letter, a cover letter, and the executive summary uh, of the of the report. Uh, this is what we're we're sharing with you at, at this time. But what about the report itself? Does the Security Council get it? Does Mr. Suda get it? This is. Uh, I've just told you what, what's going on. And how does it relate to Mr. Chambas, who, as, as came up, was, was in the middle of this investigation, was laterally moved to, a, to another USG post? I mean, who was, that's why I'm asking you sort of who was responsible. Is it a matter of, obviously, uh, someone the, decided not to? I could say the, the yeah. Secretary General is committed to addressing the issues uncovered by the review, whose main aim was to determine where the weaknesses uh, were in the overall reporting chain from the field uh, to UN headquarters. The incidents that were the focus of the review occurred for the most part before Mr. Chambas's arrival in the mission. 